So a couple of weeks ago I was minding my own business watching the E3 trailers when this happened. And in the words of a great man, I want that. Hey folks, my name is Adam and I like to make tiny nerdy things. And today I made the Bokoblin Talus from the Breath of the Wild 2 trailer. I was originally going to make the talus out of clay, but decided against my better judgment to turn this video into sort of an ASMR that makes you want to cut your ears off. I've also got this extra thick foam lying around, and I'm not really sure what to do with it, so I figured why not make it into a big rocky boy. It's about 50 millimeters thick, so it's the perfect size for the scale that I'm aiming at. Once I've chopped out a big chunky body, I'll carve some meaty fists and some itty bitty legs, then all I need to do is get close to his spawn point and he'll naturally form into the shape that I want. And then I'll use a tiny bit of hot glue to hold all his limbs together and a couple of rods of armature wire jammed all up inside his legs to make sure that he doesn't prematurely fall apart. Finally, to finalize the final textures, I'll use a wee rock to carefully cover the entire body in nicks and dents. Now there are still a couple gaps that I want to fill, so I'm going to fill all these gaps with gap filler before moving on to the painting. The plan is to paint with mostly washes, so I'll prime his body using a healthy coating of gesso. Gesso? Yeso. I don't know, this stuff. It's wonderful because it goes on very thick and it's going to leave all the brush strokes which will add a tiny bit more texture in. For the aforementioned washes, I'll make a couple of my own specific for this project. To make my wash, I'll add a few drops of black ink, a few drops of brown ink, and a few drops of white ink, before adding some matte medium to give it a little bit of body. Water will help thin it out and help it flow along the cracks, and then it's simple as applying it to the body, taking us from a fabled albino talus to a more recognizable stony color. I'll add a little bit of brown wash to break up the monotony of the grey, but in an effort to keep the cartoony look of the game, I'm not going to add any black washes. Washes are wonderful because they'll flow into any of the cracks and apply shading, providing you, the viewer, with the illusion of competence on my part. Finally, dry brushing in three stages with grey, bone white, then white, and we're on to making his base. He's clearly skipped leg day, and with all the added stuff on top, I want to make sure that the base is nice and heavy. To that end, I'm basically going to make a puck out of plaster. Now, it does feel a bit cliche that my first inclination was to make a hockey puck, but this is one of those pretty accurate stereotypes. I was left with the paper from the inside of the tape roll bonded to the plaster, but this worked out pretty well in the end, as it sort of acted as a redneck primer for when I paint the edges black. Now before I add the grass on top, I want to lay down a layer of dirt which is a mixture of glue, sand, paint, and grout. Once that's been given ample time to dry, I'm ready to add the static grass on top. So I'll coat the base in a PVA glue and then add a few layers of 3mm summer grass. And once I brush the residue off the black sides, I'll set it aside and get back to my rocky boy. The Bokoblin platforms are made out of pretty wonky planks, so I've made a few cardboard templates, which I will remake using the wonkiest material I own, stir sticks, toothpicks, and kebab skewers. To make the base of the platform, I'll lay down a motley collection of differently sized stir sticks and popsicle sticks, and then I'll chop them down to relatively equal lengths. To make them look a little less perfect, I'll scuff up the edges and the ends until I've got some appropriately monstery looking planks. And once I've gone through the same process with the rest of the platforms, I'll start gluing them all together. A strip of tape will hold all the pieces in place and I'll use a little bit of wood glue on the edges of the piece so that I know they are nice and sturdy. Now this is a wonky monster platform, so I'm going to need a whole bunch of ugly logs. I only have these perfectly round dowel, but with a little bit of anti-TLC I can chop them down to length and give them a much needed makeover. Of course I'm also going to need a bunch of spikes, so I'll give some toothpicks and kebab skewers at the old choppy choppy. I'll glue a few of the logs onto the bottoms of each of the platforms before jamming a big honking piece of lumber into the side of the talus. And I can glue the two side platforms in place before adding the three sections on top. And it's just a case of adding random beams and logs in wherever I felt like. I figured the messier the better here, since I can't imagine the Bokoblins are particularly accomplished engineers. 
There are a couple spiky bits hanging off the sides, presumably to keep our stalwart adventure from easily climbing up, which I'll make using a log with spikes glued to it. No, I know that these are some pretty advanced crafting moves, but if you stick with it, you too will be able to glue stuff to other stuff. Now at this point things were going really well and I was enjoying myself, so I decided to fix that by adding ropes to all of the connection points after the fact. This would have been easy enough to do at the start, but I knew that if I waited until now to do it, I could add that patented Adam self-loathing that goes into all of my models. Three hours later, it was time to make the luminous stone that would adorn his left shoulder. To make this, I rolled up a lump of black clay into an egg shape and then chopped it down until I had some nice flat surfaces. Then I added a little bit of texture to each of the surfaces before coating the entire thing in a nice glossy varnish. Now if you haven't got any varnish, you can always give the illusion of glossiness by painting the edges with a thin bead of white paint. With the big stuff finished, it's on to making the accessories. Now the Buckoblins opted to pimp their ride using rags and bones, the most prominent of these being the big teeth attached to the platforms. I'm not entirely sure what creature these teeth came from since they're so large, but I thought they might be Molduga teeth or possibly harvested from the great skeletons. If you got a better idea, let me know in the comments below. These will get glued into place and then I can add some ropes to hang my rags and flags off of. The ropes are made out of some woven twine and locked in place using a little bit of thinned out CA glue. I tried a few different methods for making the rags, including, you know, rags, but I didn't have any that I liked the texture of and nothing that hung very well, so I ended up using really thin strips of clay. Obviously, you can't bake the talus since the foam would melt and you'd be left with the Lizalfos base and a rough case of foam smoke pneumonia, so once I'd gotten the clay fabric in place, I simply removed the rope and held it using some soldering hands. And once I've textured a little bit and made it look a little bit more raggy, a quick blast with a heat gun will cure the clay and I can reattach it once it's hardened. There's another strip of fabric hanging off the platform beside the luminous stone, which I made using a bit more clay with a bit of orange mixed in, and then there's a couple wooden walls on the same side that I made using stir sticks wrapped in twine. These get glued in place, and then I'll add a couple more rags and furs onto the other side. Now I really like the lighter color of the wood on top, but it blends in a bit too much with the beams and spikes, so I'm going to play a little game I like to call, try and paint those really small hard to reach places, without accidentally painting all the other bits and pieces. And with the beams repainted, I can add the little blue flags that hang down from the posts. These are all made out of clay as well, and they are ridiculously brittle. Probably over the course of this build, I snapped them off and re-glued them a half dozen times each, and they're more glue now than clay. When it's time to repaint all my rags, furs, and flags. The idea here is to give the bits hanging off the sides a sort of a furry look, so whites, browns, and beiges blended together, and then the rags hanging off the front of the towels will get the world-renowned Bokoblin artistry painted over top. This is where I get to really showcase my shaky, middle-aged, alcoholic, tremor-induced painting skills, since it's kind of supposed to look bad. Then a quick dry brush just to highlight all the edges and then I'll glue on a couple more strands of twine across the front of the rags to really make it look like it's just random bits of fabric that they threw up there all will and nilly. I'll paint the twine on the wooden walls green and then dust everything with a nice white dry brush. Normally I would give all the wood a wash to highlight those gouges and imperfections but I want to keep that nice bright coloring so instead I'll use this white dry brush just to highlight all the edges and give it a little bit of nice variation. Then the finishing touches will be adding those little white symbols on the walls. To make the platform that sits on top and houses the horn blowing boy, I've made another small stir stick floor and glued four posts to it. I've made sure that two of the posts sit a little bit lower to account for the variation in platform height, then added the various cross braces. Two of these braces are made of bone, so I've rolled out some bone white clay and set them in place. I've also painted the posts brown and I'll attach a clay skull to each of the corner posts. Then I draped a larger piece of fur over the top before painting it to match what you see in the game. Finally, I chopped some toothpicks into shorter pieces and I'll glue them together to make an adorable little log ladder. Then both of these can get glued in place, and that's the talus mostly finished. I did decide that the back was a bit bare, so I made another random rag on rope contraption and attached it to the topmost platform. 
Lastly, once I've drilled a couple holes in our grassy hockey puck, I can set the towels in place and that's us basically finished. Of course, what kind of Bokoblin decorated talus camp would be complete without a handful of teeny tiny pigmen? I found a great 3D model of the Bokoblin from the game that's stuck in a T-pose, which is perfect for marking out my armature. When he's finished, this guy should stand about 25 millimeters tall from toe to overcompensatingly long horn tip. I recently picked up some new colored clay and I wanted to take this opportunity to see how I like sculpting in color. And I gotta say, it's the tits. At least for smaller characters like these, it's really nice to have a solid base color and not have to worry about painting any of the hard to reach sections. It also works wonders for hiding imperfections, since one solid color is a lot less likely to show cracks and fingerprints in the same way that painting with a brush would. However, I know that I'm going to want to paint some of the details on top and add a bit of highlight to some of the smaller parts. So a lot of the things that I intend to paint will get sculpted in white, which should be really easy to paint over with whatever color I choose in the end. For instance, the tidy whitey loincloth will start white and then I can paint it brown later. Once I've got his body finished, I'll bake it once to cure it so that I don't have to worry about disfiguring it while I'm working on the head. His head will be one big ball slopped on top, then I'll poke some eye holes and a mouth before filling them with eyeballs and teeth. While I make the rest of his face, I'd like to thank the people that keep me fed while I make these videos. So a big thank you to my newest patrons, Dylan Wright, Loopy Mind, Sarah Hennessy, Kim Roger, Morva Lyra, Quirky Perceptions, Charlotte Comrie, Crafty Kiko, and Zarin Gamble. If you like these videos, then please consider subscribing, smash that like button, leave me a comment, and share with your friends, enemies, and everyone in between. Of course, if you aspire to have your praises sung in a YouTube video, then head on over to my Patreon, you can find the link in the description below. Of course, much like our burnt red Bokoblin friend, I'm all ears for suggestions, so let me know in the comments below what you'd like to see in the future. We may reach solar death before I get around to making all the ideas I get from you lovely, lovely people, but that will not stop me from trying. Now as far as our friend here is concerned, the only real difference between him and his Breath of the Wild counterparts seem to be that his horn is decidedly larger this time around. I've also finished with the sculpting and I'm on to painting all the little details. I will paint inside his ears and add the wrist wraps using a bone white, then I'll use some sepia wash to tint his horn and add some skid marks to his tidy whities Then it's just a case of painting all the little bits and pieces that would otherwise be a bit of a pain to sculpt. So I'll get his toenails, I will paint his eyes a nice dark blue, and then highlight them with slightly lighter for the pupils, and then I'll finish off by painting the little necklace chain with a green over top. Now the highly observant among you may notice that he's holding a wooden club, which is made out of just brown clay. Then once he was finished, I made two more friends for him. One guy holding a horn and another holding a bow. So the only thing left to do will be add them into their appropriate places on the talus. And then we're on to our glamour shots. 